So at this point, if the question was as to how the appliances in a household are connected together, you probably know the answer. Um, they're connected in parallel primarily because you know each of the each of the uh, appliances you know has a load, right? Has a resistance. If you take one of these out, right? If you take one of these out, you only stop the current flowing from. Uh, from from flowing through in that particular circuit in that particular branch of the circuit and the current continues to flow through the rest of the loads so, so that's how they're connected now let's talk about the, the combined or or compound circuit okay so combined or compound circuits so combined or compound circuits are the circuits where you have a combination of series and parallel loads okay so Let's say we have, you know, a battery over here, which is supplying a voltage V and we have one register here. We have another register here. We have another register over here. And, you know, that's how they are uh, arranged. Okay, so let's say this is resistance R1, that's R2, and this is R3. So if I ask you a question uh, and, and, uh, and ask basically as to how these registers are connected together, well, it may be very difficult to tell whether they're in series or in parallel, right? Because let's say the current I goes from the source, it goes this way, it goes this way, and then you can clearly see that at the junction point here that it'll get divided into the sub-branches and then it'll come down and then it'll combine back in here, right? If the current was same throughout all the registers, then we could say that, yes, this was in series, right? If let's say all the voltage differences across the registers were same, we could say that they were in parallel, but that clearly is not the case. But if you focus on a part of the circuit, let's say you focus only on R2 and R3, you can see that R2 and R3 are actually in parallel. Why? Because if you look at this junction point, this junction point is at the same voltage as this junction point over here. Similarly, this junction point is the same voltage here, right? Assuming again, no voltage drop in the in the wires. In reality, that would always happen. So this is point A then, and this is point B, then clearly the VA minus VB is same for both R2 and R3, right? So VA minus VB, which is the voltage difference across, across R2 and R3, is exactly the same, right? Okay, so which means that we could actually combine R2 and R3 into one equivalent register. Okay, so let's do that. So since voltage drop across A and B are same, they are in parallel, that means we could replace this part of the circuit uh, with one effective register. So we'll draw this again. So I've got my you know, battery, I've got my R1, and then I'm going to replace R2 and R3 with one register. What will be the resistance value of that register? Well, we know that to compute the effective resistance of the two parallel register, we have to write one over R effective equal to, and we'll call it one over R over effective prime, equal to one over R2 plus one over R3, and R effective prime is equal to R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3, so this one would be R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3, right? So we replace those two parallel registers with one register of effective resistance of this, okay? Now you see that this circuit after simplification has become a series circuit because the same current I that will flow through R1 and this register over here, right? So now you can replace this circuit with another one with one register Let's call it now R effective. Now you see why I didn't use R effective here. I wanted to be, make it differentiated. That would be equal to R1 plus what this is, which is R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3, right? So essentially, we just add up all the resistance because they're in series and we get our effective resistance. Now, once we have our effective resistance for this cir circuit, we can find out what the current would be because the Ohm's law says V is equal to I times R effective. So if I have all these values, I can compute what my uh, the total current would be okay now let's do an example we'll do a numerical example so i have the same circuit and i have my battery here okay and let's say this uh, register over here is 80 ohm and uh, this one is 100 ohm and this one is 50 ohm and the voltage applied 
from this source is 120 volts okay so it could be your ac main you know from the home or it could be a really a 120 volt dc battery source okay and the question is uh, what are the voltage drop across each registers what is the total current what is the total current what is the current flowing through each of these segments and there are all these questions let's say we want to answer right so first of all you can see that 100 ohm and 50 ohm registers are in parallel so their equivalent resistance r effective prime is 50 times 100 divided by 100, 100 plus 50 that's 150 so that's 3 and that's 100 over 3 so that's 33.3 ohm right so the effective resistance of these two is 33.3 ohm and then that would be in series with this 80 ohm register so the total effective resistance would be 80 plus 33.3 ohm so that's what uh, so that's 113.3 ohm right if i got my uh, calculation right so that's the effective resistance so this circuit has been now replaced with my 120 volt source 120 volt source and one register which is of effective resistance 113.3 ohm so i can compute what my current would be now so my current would be de determined by the ohm's law so 120 equal to i times 113.3 ohm so that gives me the current equal to 1.3 zero six ampere okay so that's the current flowing from the source okay so that's the current that will flow through the 80 ohm register no doubt about that but that 1.06 ohm current that's coming here 1.06 uh, not ohm sorry 1.06 ampere current coming here will be now divided between 100 ohm and 50 ohm register so the question is what is the current flowing through 100 ohm register let's say so so we can again apply the ohm's law across the 100 ohm register that would be voltage drop across 100 ohm register let's call it v100 is equal to current through that so we'll call it pi 100 times the resistance that's 100 ohm right so can we find i i 100 from that uh, for that we have to find out what the voltage difference across uh, the 100 ohm register similarly uh, we can write the same relationship similar relationship for 50 ohm register so voltage drop across 50 ohm register is equal to the current across the 50 ohm register times its resistance value which is 50 ohm right so that's the other relationship so once again we don't know what v50 is so we can't compute what i50 is right so it looks like we we need to determine more relationship over here now let's focus on the voltage drop across 80 ohm register so what is that so voltage drop across 80 ohm register is equal to the current flowing through the 80 ohm register let's call it i80 times the, the resistance value which is 80 okay so first of all what is the current through 80 ohm register fortunately we know that that's the current that's emanating from the source right so it's 1.06 ampere so we can find out what we uh, voltage drop across 80 ohm register is that's equal to 1.06 times 80 and what is that number so that's equal to 84.8 volt okay so that's the voltage drop across 80 ohm register okay so that's good so let's say you know this is point a this is the point b and this is the point C, you know, let me use the different color. So this is point A, this is point B, and that's point C, okay? So, so we just found that the voltage drop across A and B, which is the voltage drop across A ohm register, is 84.8 volt, right? So we have VA minus VB is equal to VAT, that's 84.8 volt, right? Okay, now, from this, we can find out what the voltage drop across B and C would be, okay? How do we do that? So we know that... If you look at this whole circuit right if you look at this whole circuit then we can write this we can say v a minus v b plus v b minus v c okay so we're doing that so v a minus v b is voltage drop across 80 ohm v b minus v c is voltage drop across 100 ohm which is same as voltage drop across 50 ohm register they added together would be equal to the voltage drop across the battery why because the point a is connected here right point a is connected to the positive terminal and point c is connected to the negative terminal so v a minus v c is nothing but the voltage drop across the the battery or you could say the the voltage across the battery so that is equal to 120 volt that's 120 volt okay so all that 120 volt across the battery has to be distributed across the different loads so, so we already know what VA minus VB is that's 84.8 so that gives us VB minus VC equal to 120 minus 84.8 and that is equal to 35.2 volts okay so this tells us what the voltage drop across 
B and Cs, but the voltage drop across across B and C is same as the voltage drop across each of these 50 ohm and 100 ohm register, right? So this is equal to 35.2 volt, and this is equal to 35.2 volt. So which means that now from these two, I can compute what I100 would be. I100 would be equal to 35.2 divided by 100 ampere. So this would be equal to uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.352 amp. And from here we get I50 equal to 35.2 divided by 50. So that would be 0.352 divided by 2 uh, ampere. And that would be equal to what? Uh, 0.17 uh, and 6 ampere. No, it's not sorry, not half of it. Uh, so this is not half actually. It will be multiplied by 2, right? So, so it will be 2 times 0.352. So that would give me what will give me 0 0.704 ampere right so that's what we get so now let's look at all of these numbers okay so starting from 120 volt so the source current uh, is equal to 1.06 amp that's this right so that's the current that's emanating from the battery that 1.06 amp goes through the 80 ohm register then across the 100 ohm register we have 0 0.352 amp of current and across across the 50 ohm register we have 0 0.704 so if we add these two numbers we should get 1.06 ohm 1.06 uh, ampere which is which is the case in this case, over here right so by repeated application of the ohms law you can find out what the current in each uh, branch of the circuit is what the voltage drop across in each circuit is so now let's look at another example and I won't solve it except to just to uh, tell you as to how the elements are connected over here. Let's say we have a battery and we have a register here, we have a register here, I have a register here um, and then I have another register over here and then I have one more register over here like this. Okay. And uh, now the question is, let's say we know all of these R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5. The first question is what is the effective resistance as seen by the the source the voltage okay so across the point a and point b okay the question is what is the effective resistance as seen by the point a and b okay so we want to replace this entire thing with a simple circuit where this is the point a and i want to have an effective resistance this is the point b effective resistance and the question is what is this equal to okay so we have to recognize which elements over here are in series which ones are in parallel so let's do that we can see that r4 and r5 are in parallel so r4 is parallel to R5, okay? We can see R2 and R3 are parallel to each other. Why? Because the voltage drop across the two is same, just as voltage drop across R2 and R4 and R5 is same. So R2 and R3 are in parallel. And then R1 is in series with, uh, with whatever you will get from replacing these two with one register and whatever you'll get by replacing these two, right? So let's do that. So I will do this step by step. So I got my R1 here. And then I will replace my R2 and R3 with effective register R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3, right? And then I'll replace R4 and R5 with R4 times R5 divided by R4 plus R5. So this is in parenthesis. And then here's my battery source, right? And now I can see that this, this, and this, these three are in, in series. So R effective would be equal to R1 plus R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3 plus R4 times R5 divided by R4 plus 